Good morning, everybody. It's Drayton here with World's Greatest Kiting and Michelle and Dave. Good morning. Hey, um, yesterday we went out flying that Tantrum 220. You both had a chance to fly it. What did you think of that flying that kite? Well, first of all, I wanted to thank Drake because I'd never flown a double line, dual line, I guess you'd call it, kite before. I've been following Drake and following the kiting, and it always looked fun. But I never really got the why, why are people get addicted to this? Why do you want to do it? I actually took my son out so he could fly it and I got a chance to fly it myself. I literally flew that kite probably for an hour. Oh yeah, my I think it was about so an hour. Sore. My point is, is you have to fly a kite to really get what it's about. You can watch the videos and it looks cool, it looks fun, yeah. but I'm glad I went and you introduced me to the dual line kite. For one, that kite's awesome, by the way. It, is it was cool easy to fly. Uh, at first I was intimidated, but I eventually got the feel of it. I was able to do loops and have a good time. So I guess my recommendation to your followers is if you haven't ever flown a dual line kite, I would recommend you do it. And that kite, you, I would recommend that kite. What was that kite the called? The Tantrum, again? the Prism, it's made by Prism Kite Designs. It's the Tantrum 220. The Prism Tantrum, I'm actually gonna be buying one for me and my son because my son loved it, I loved it. And my son just said it's amazing. DJ right loved there, it. Which you saw in the video, I think, probably yesterday. Michelle, so, what did you think about it? Awesome. It was so easy to fly. I loved it. That's yeah. Great. So, for a kite, this, it could be pretty intimidating, especially in heavy wind like we had yesterday. But that was really cool. And yeah. your son, DJ, who we just saw, mastered it almost. I mean, he, in the video of yesterday, if you guys watched yesterday's vlog, you can see DJ running around with it at first but then he learned to control it yeah. so even a, a guy his size can, 85 pounds yeah 85 I said 125 he's way lighter than that <laughs> it's way more dangerous than what we thought but it's actually not that dangerous when you instruct so before properly. you judge him uh, I'm sure you watched that video <laughs> yesterday like oh my gosh why would Drake be letting a kid fly in that high of winds <laughs> I was there, it was safe, it was fun. Yeah, Anyways, that was a good time. I loved it, had a great time, and um, I definitely would recommend flying a dual line kite, I'd recommend that one. Hey, so sure. if you guys wanna know more about David and Michelle and what they do, what is, what's your uh, social media outlets? How can people find you guys? Uh, what would we Magnetize.me. Magnetize.me. We, we just, we basically build websites, we uh, do SEO, all that. So these guys have helped me a lot create my website they're always encouraging if you guys want to know more about how to make your website better or anything in the social media field you want to do to help promote what you do these guys are the people to call I'm telling you I'll put a link below right down there click on it you can go directly to their website and see what they do and hopefully you can meet them too someday in person they're yeah. worth it thank you yeah, DJ, you want to say anything to all the world's greatest kiting out there? Keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching. Yay. You heard keep, it, Sophia. And keep. <laughs> and keep dancing. And keep flying. Keep shaking those bones. <laughs> I'm in Orlando for the day. I'm lucky to have this. Pretty cool view for a little while. Lake Eola. Orlando is a nice town in my previous hometown. Hi friends. As you saw, I got to spend the afternoon in Orlando. Most of the day was spent driving after I had to say goodbye to my friends, Dave, Michelle, Sophia, DJ. Hey, if you guys want to check out more of DJ, he's got a really good YouTube channel too. It's called DJ's channel. Go check that out, but we're gonna go on a little walking tour. Hey there. Hey. Walking tour of downtown St. Pete today. Our stop number two, first we went to the uh, Snell Arcade a few weeks back. Now we're gonna go to another location just close to, well, just one block over. First, time to check the mail. Ooh, got some stuff. Yeah. 
cool. So from right here where my post office box is, you don't have to go far to where the next historic building is. Now it has a different name than what it used to be called. But right here is the Princess Martha. Most people around town know the Princess Martha as being the nice retirement home. I think it's, uh, it's definitely deed restricted, which means that only people over a certain age can live there, but it's meant for people in their golden years, say. But originally, I'll show you here, the Princess Martha in the book. It was originally built in 1924 as the Mason Hotel. Went bankrupt a short time after because of the Great Depression and reopened as the Princess Martha. It says it's one of the best examples of neoclassical revival style architecture. I did a little digging online and found out a few things about the Princess Martha. I don't know if I necessarily believe in ghosts. I, I tend not to believe in ghosts. I, there's some things paranormal maybe, but I don't know about ghosts. I did, of course, look and see if there was any kind of ghost haunting, haunted rooms. You know, it's popular for a, a lot of a lot of people, but there was nothing like that about this hotel. I wish I could tell you some very interesting stories, and I'm sure that there were some cool stories and cool experiences that people had in this building over the years. 1924 it was built, and only two years later, it doesn't say that in this publication, but I did find out that only two years later, Mr. Mason himself, he was a contractor, a builder, here in the St. Petersburg area. He built a few other hotels. This was one of the largest hotels in the area, 2,000 rooms. The architecture is pretty cool, and I'd like to see what's up in that, that little area there. Is that a courtyard? Do they have like plants that, that grow up there? I don't know. But it would be cool to see inside the building, check out some some room, see what it, if it looks like a hotel anymore. I too live, as many of you know, live in a renovated hotel that is now condos. And it is cool to think about all of the history that happened there. My hotel, Babe Ruth lived there. Uh, some other famous baseball players lived there during spring training back in the early days of baseball. And about this hotel, I have no idea. I think that this hotel, as far as I know, became residences soon after it, they went bankrupt and had to rebuild or rename the hotel. Not rebuild it. Inside the Princess Martha, there's some interesting businesses now. I've never seen this. A barber salon and art gallery. It's closed right now. You might not be able to see in. But that looks pretty cool. Yeah. Do a haircut for twelve dollars. This is inside the lobby. So you know your bearings. Here's the Princess Martha. And right here is the post office that I go to. And then in some of the first episodes of World's Greatest Kiting Daily Vlog, there's Williams Park. This reminds me, I'm in front of this new restaurant and Bob Marley's band, the Whalers, are gonna be here tomorrow night. I'll show you some of that too. I'm looking forward to checking out this new diner that's in town. Just open up. 
What's this guy doing? Hey, guy. What are you doing there? Looking for some food? Well, there's a diner right here. You could have just went to the diner. Well, maybe he didn't know they're open. Well, friends, the end of another episode has come. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great night and happy flying.